Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Questine here with a discussion about Festus the Leech Lord of Nurgle and why he still has the best Nurgle campaign even after all the changes that Creative Assembly has made to Nurgle. I mean he was already the best campaign of Nurgle out of the two of them compared to Kugav like it was a night and day difference and he certainly still is stronger than either Kugav, Epidemius, certainly Epidemius and even Tamarkan. Though, to be fair, if there is a Nurgle campaign that could compete with Festus, it certainly would be Tamarkan. But it is better and stronger to play a Warriors of Chaos Nurgle campaign as opposed to a dedicated Nurgle campaign. There's a couple of reasons behind this. But in terms of the changes that Festus has got gained through uh, Thrones of the King, we now have the new Plague System. It bugged out over here for whatever reason. Just just an issue. Plenty of bugs in 5.0 that Creative Assembly needs to fix. Some of these things that they've started fixing already. I think we're all waiting for 5.1 to come out. Because it's hopefully going to introduce uh, some fairly major bug fixes. But still, you get the new Plague System if you are playing a campaign as... Um, as Festus. And yes, more bugs, like over here, the Beastmen also bugged out. Uh, I've actually made Kazdrak useful in this campaign. I'll explain how in just a, uh, just a bit. But there's more benefits in a Festus campaign with regards to plagues than there are in a Nurgle campaign. Because you may not necessarily have the same blessed symptoms like, say, someone like Kugaf does have, but what you do have is the ability of getting far more plagues during the course of your campaign. The reason is that in an Urgle campaign, your infections have to be used for buildings, rush cycle, or for plagues. So that means you have that choice. You do get more plagues because of income from buildings, of course. Whereas if you're playing a campaign as Festus, you only gain them from battles. So technically you could say, oh, you're going to be using fewer plagues. But you're not going to have units to recruit if you're not getting military cycle buildings if you're playing a campaign as Nurgle. Whereas if you're playing a campaign as Festus, your unit recruitment is only, you know, limited by viability. But, like, over here it is turn 26 and I am maintaining three full stacks over here. Some better than others to be sure, like, this is probably the weakest army or maybe this one is the weakest army. Ooh, Vlad is showing up over here with a bunch of zombies. Already beat the crap out of him. Gonna beat the crap out of him. Aspiring champions, run knights, grey unclean one. I don't care how powerful Vlad is, he's not gonna be able to defeat this army. So, there are certainly uh, certain limitations in a Warriors of Chaos campaign, but you do gain more play, uh, you do gain more infections. Your Occupation of Salamence gives you infections. Sacking Salamence gives you infections. So you're actually going to get quite a few infections. And because Creative Assembly has changed the cap from 37 to 100, and they're looking to change it maybe even further going forward, yeah, you can get a lot of plagues. I think like with Nurgle, it would just make sense to have a different resource for structures as opposed to just plagues, because right now that choice just either limits your unit recruitment so fewer armies in general, if you could even afford it, because like the problem for Nurgle, yeah, you can build, get buildings to give you infections, but you're sacrificing your income for it, which is one of the benefits for Festus, because you don't have to f sacrifice anything in terms of your income in order uh, to get that. On top of that, when we look at Festus as well, he does also have some other benefits. He gets plus 25 uh, casualties captured post-battle, so that means even more infections. And I think like, you could that you can actually get over the cap because like this campaign I've been playing on modded, uh, there is, there was a mod release that you know gave you more infections per battle, obviously disabled it with the hotfix that Creative Assembly has released, uh, but you also reduce the cost, the infection cost to create the plague by minus twenty five percent. This only applies of course to Festus himself, but that means you just get much cheaper plagues in your campaign, like a plague with fifty five percent. Uh, chance to spread, 9 turn duration, it's like, and, uh, free, and uh, extra immunity turns, it's like only 500 over here. And, you know, if I remove the immunity duration, I can get it for 375. You can get up to 100 from each bow, so if you have free armies, as well as uh, some other benefits, you can create the plague every turn. You can also get infections through Foster Cult's commandment, so five infections per turn. So it's obviously less 
far less than one Nurgle can get. But again, like structures are expensive. 200 for a basic monetary structure, 400 for an advanced one. And then infections also for research, which like 200, 400 uh, infections for research is pretty painful. So that's, those are the kind of dilemmas you do have in a Nurgle campaign. FS this just doesn't have to deal with. So yeah, he's stronger from that perspective. Another thing to also talk with respect to Festus, he has every climate available. You know how annoying and ridiculous it is like in a Nurgle campaign, you've got factions surrounded by mountains, every single Nurgle faction, and mountains are unpleasant. You ha do not have that issue with Warriors of Chaos. Now, I don't particularly like Warriors of Chaos as a race because I think they're just too much of a cakewalk of a race. But to be sure, your to be sure, in terms of strength, and honestly, just in pure enjoyment of a campaign, like, I would much rather play a Fistus campaign than an Epidemius campaign or a Kugaf campaign. Bit of a discussion on the subject of Tamarcon. If they fix the climate situation and campaign objectives in terms of vassalization, that would be better. And yeah, better campaign objectives. Because all you need to do, because unlike Tamarcon or Epidemius, who have to destroy, like, Grimgore or Malice Darkblade, you just have to take certain settlements that can be owned by your vassals and military allies. And same for your long campaign victory conditions. So better victory conditions, better plagues, or more plentiful plagues, better unit recruitment, better economy. And that's not even the end of it. Like, look at this campaign. This is turn 26. I've got Boris Kazrak. Yes, I've managed to make peace in the world between Boris and Kazrak. And I've actually made Kazrak more useful, even though this army is bugged over here. Uh, whenever you vassalize a faction, you give that faction an extra army. So Kazdrak, unlike every other Beastman campaign, is running around with two armies over here as opposed to just one. You could possibly use this as Valkia as well for Tarox and make him more useful. I mean, it's still crappy armies. These, the Beastmen are not going to increase their incaps. Maybe they do need some improvements in that respect, especially their AI. But yeah, it's like, you know, I've got Boris, I've got Kazdrak. I've got Carl Franz, and I just recently gained Elspeth as a vassal. <laughs> so it's like, unleash the true empire. And oh, look at this. This is the nemesis crown. Hmm. Imagine getting the nemesis crown and not giving a damn. The reason you don't give a damn, it's like, what's the downsides of the nemesis crown? Consider this. The biggest downside is diplomatic relations with all factions. Well, guess what? A lot of factions hate you regardless. But because you have very powerful vassals like i've got grom as well in this campaign like i didn't even need to subjugate him because that's the benefit in uh warriors of cast campaign as opposed to nurgle campaign when you take the last element of a faction you can subjugate them so that's what what i've done for carl france here i didn't destroy Aldor if i didn't sack it i bypassed it and then i obviously took these elements and sold them to carl france back once i vassalized them Obviously, take a known very powerful stuff over here. You know, the throne of chaos, pretty good stuff. But yeah, like the nemesis crown is obviously going to cause diplomatic downsides. But you're so powerful. Like it might say I'm stre if, if action strength rank four, but in reality, I'm significantly higher than that because I've got these vassals. So their strength ranking is added to mine. So. It, whenever you play a Warriors of Chaos campaign, you're, or whenever you vassalize factions in general in any campaign, like it can be Vlad, it can be Nurgle, it can be Slanish, you're very rarely going to, uh, to have factions declare a war on you. Maybe it is a bit of a cheap system, to be sure, and I think like the idea was great, it's fun, but it's like it just certainly cheapens campaigns, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, oh, that but it is very powerful. And that's the thing, like more unit variety, and also because of the warband upgrade system, you genuinely get more unit variety as well, because you can upgrade units in different ways. Also, interesting note on the subject of unit variety, you can get a lot of trolls in cast, Warriors of Chaos campaigns, but now you can make those trolls, if you're playing as Kugaf, and, uh, sorry, as uh, Festus, you can make those trolls in either on the Vida campaigns or in a Festus campaign, you can make them Bile Trolls. So if you want to use the new Bile Troll units, they are available. They're also available in every Undivided campaign. As for the other units that Nurgle does get with uh, Thrones of Decay, well, they're available through the Gifts of Nurgle. Limited how many you can get in an army, but hey, you want to get Plague Ogres with Grey Weapons, uh, you want to get things like uh, Toad Dragons, you want to get all the wonderful new units that, that Nurgle has, all the demonic units, basically, those are available in the campaign uh, over here. So you get the entire unit roster. 
you don't have the entire hero roster to be sure and you do have more limited heroes because you do need the dark fortress to increase hero capacity so that can be a bit of an issue right because like over but over here like i have free heroes of each type like turn 26 that is not a bad situation and this is in a context where i only have three dark fortresses and one of them is not even increasing hero capacity like once i go over here to norska and start getting a lot more dark fortresses or kislev things will end up being far far better in this campaign in terms of like just hero capacity like festus does have that problem of like early game being limited and how many dark fortresses he can take to take but yeah you can make the entire empire and even Vlad, like, if I wanted to vassalize Vlad, uh, I could do so. For diplomacy, it would be tricky. It's a shame he declared war on me, because it would have been easier had he not. But, yeah, you can vassalize. Like, imagine a campaign where you're vassalizing Vlad, Elspeth, Karl Franz, Tadi, Kazrak, Rom, and that's just the tip of the spear. Like, you can vassalize any faction. Um, any human faction. So, like, Lewin, for instance, I could do that with him or elven factions like i could go over here to wolf one and do what nakari does in his campaign or their campaign whatever you want to call nakari by so great deal of power great army variety more power you get fun stuff like harold hammerstorm which is like just freaking awesome for all the chieftain for all the awesome chieftains tamarcon has like harold hammerstorm is just such a great character to to actually have uh in a campaign you get more artillery like Tamarcon is special because he gets one Dreadquake Mortar and two Helicannons. Imagine imagine getting every army with... Imagine getting Helicannon Doomstacks. It might take you longer than Tamarcon because you do need to get these Gifts of Chaos. But, like, once you get rolling in a campaign, right? Once you get rolling in a campaign, you can just constantly swap one turn to another from, like, Gifts and just get instant Helicannons. Or wait four turns. You will not struggle. Like, it takes a while. You do need Souls. But, like, once you do get that, like, you know, by turn 40, I'd be running around with Plague Ogres, um, Plague Ogres, Tail Dragons, Hellcannons, and every single f one of them are me. And I can still, and I can get even more artillery, of course, for the Legion system. Those, to be fair, Tamarcon can vassalize factions for diplomacy, but good luck vassalizing the Empire as Tamarcon, because they despise you. That's the problem. You, you can vassalize factions for diplomacy, but if they despise you, which they do, it's going to be difficult. Like, you can do it with Grimgore because he doesn't hate you and you end up fighting factions that he hates, like Colic he hates, for instance, Ogres he doesn't like, for instance. So that's one of the reasons it works in a Tamarcon campaign, but like here, the subjugation power is real, it is strong, and is incredible. Beyond the diplomatic power. So yeah, if you're looking to play a Nurgle campaign, like, it's really hard to go up against the Doctor. And it's a lot more fun from my perspective like than gallivanting in the mountains in an Urgle campaign like even if they fix the climate situation i would dare say with tamarcon like yeah, look i get it tamarcon's fun he has a lot of quest battles i appreciate them but campaign like battle wise he's a lot of fun certainly more fun than festus can be i agree with that uh, but like in terms of campaign mechanics like yeah festus beats the the hell out of all of all the others and you can even go further, like you can get the, the Recruit, Defeated, Ledger, and Lord's Mod, and just get Epidemius, Tamarcon, and Kuga, if they do get defeated. Maybe at one point Creative Assembly will allow us to confederate these factions, you know, confederate, if you're playing Warriors of Cast, confederate, you know, Tamarcon, Epidemius, and Kuga, if that would make Festus even better. Or being able to get Festus if you're playing like, Tamarcon campaign, for instance. Though, good luck getting to the Empire. That is all I had to say. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And don't forget the regiments right now as well, because those are available. Stay tuned for more.